Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, NHL slate. Very handy five-game slate. Last night we were so close. We had that last game just pounded, and they scored enough. Just couldn't quite get the right combinations down. Uh, rats. Anyway, uh, maybe we'll get a little luckier tonight. Um, and again, it's it's weird. You know, you have the seven, seven thirty, seven thirty, and then a big gap to these ten o'clock. And oh, you know, I love these ten o'clock games. Um, we'll see if we actually like them today, but uh, yeah. So again, we're going to do the same uh, process. We're going to look at the team totals and get an idea of who we think is going to be viable. Then we're going to look at the actual projections of the players and see who we think visually should be viable. We're going to build, try to build lineups with what we think should be viable. And then uh, we'll have Saberson come and save the day and maybe build some lineups for us uh, if we can't uh, do a good job of doing it ourselves. Nonetheless, so I'm going to look at, again, the usual sites that I look for team totals. Again, not the Vegas lines. I'm looking at a couple of, of, of fantasy sites. I have Daily Roto. These are all free, which is why I don't mind showing them. You know, I'm sure they wouldn't get mad at the free publicity anyway. Um, so according to Daily Roto, you have 3-8 team total for Tampa, uh, also a 3-8 team total for New Jersey. Four for Pittsburgh is a little higher, and then 3-8 for Vegas and Calgary. So it looks as though you got all five of these games are in play, according to Daily Road, as far as just team totals. Um, I think all five favorites um, look to be extremely viable and very close. So if you get one group, which is going to be that much higher owned than another, maybe, you know, you could, you could, you could pivot off of that a little bit. But again, we have to see what the players are like. You know what I mean? We have to see what the players' values are, not just the, you know, not just the teams. All right, nonetheless, uh, let's move on to Saber Sims. A look at the team totals. Again, Tampa 3-8. Wow, they have Boston much lower, down at 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Pittsburgh 3-8. Wow, they have Calgary is almost down to 3-1. And then Vegas. So I just find that very interesting, you know, um, uh, that one group can be so much different than another. But one thing that's common is you have Tampa at 3-8, and Pittsburgh at 3-8, and Vancouver at 3-8, excuse me, not Vancouver, and uh, Vegas 3-8. Now let's look at, um, we'll look at daily face-off. They have Tampa at 3-9, um, which is kind of a standout over Pitt, over Pitt. Um, and then down to Vegas and Boston. Um, and again, they have Flames really low. Uh, so you have Saberson, once again, who is much higher on, who are they much higher on? No, not them. Daily Roto was much higher on the uh, on the Devils and on the Flames than these other groups. Very, very interesting. Uh, so, what are we? What are we? What are we gleaning? <laughs> that probably Vegas is a strong play, and Tampa is a strong play. These are the ones that kind of you know are, are across the board agreed upon by everybody. One thing that's interesting, though, is of all these games, you have Tampa, which is a minus 368 uh, favorite. So I imagine that people are more likely to go to that one than to say Vegas, who would be a minus 182. So, and we have to figure out what to make of this of these of these out, outliers, whether Calgary and, and the Devils are really in play, or if this is Daily Roto's uh, team total, just kind of like messing with everybody. So let's just see how all of this kind of translates to um, to um, what you call it. Uh, what this translates to as far as uh, fantasy points. So we're going to pull up my sheets. Uh, boy, I got a lot going on today. Uh, and we have this is my sheets. These this is my sheets. These are my sheets. This is my sheet. Part of the sheets where I rank all these guys, again, by sheets value score, which is a combination of fantasy points and uh, point per dollar and value and just an overall kind of cool way of looking at things. Um, and this is available usually for premium members only, but I'm doing this for hockey for you guys. And again, what we're trying to do is find clusters, you know, try to find a group of guys that are near the top that are hopefully from the same team. And hopefully from the same line, you see over here in column K and L, we have whether they're on the same even strength line or on the same power play line or both. One thing I'll notice, by the way, is that you don't have any 
kind of really strong values. In other words, I usually have a couple of kind of one-offs that are up, up like 34, 35, or even up to 40 in, in sheets value score, but everybody's kind of under 30. So what this is reflecting is what I kind of envisioned that there are probably a lot of ways to go. And if you can get any kind of an ownership break, it's probably worth taking. Let's just take a look. Let's take a look and we'll see what this is. Well, first of all, you'll notice right off the bat that the top two Tampas are right in here together. You also see Vegas looking good. You got three of the top guys in this in this group. So again, you have Tampa with two guys in the top group. You have Pittsburgh with two guys in the same group. And then actually three, because you go on to Sidney Crosby. So it looks as though if I had to, oh, and then you're down to Malkin and, Ra and Raquel. So if I had to identify the one team that stood out as the hand-built stack team, I would think it would be Pittsburgh. Okay, because again, this is not scientific and this is not based on the algorithm or anything. This is literally just taking the projections and gazing right at the screen and see if everything clusters. And we'll, listen, we'll, we'll build actual lineups in a minute and we'll see. But, but so it looks like it's either going to be Pittsburgh with this one, two, three, four. It's pretty strong for the top 14 Pittsburgh. Or maybe we try the Stone, Petrangelo, and, and Riley Smith. Okay. So those look like the two main stacks that you could hand build. That would be Pittsburgh and uh, Vegas. Now, it would be nice is if we could combine them both and do like a 4-3 with both of them. Let's see. Let's see if we can do that. First of all, goalie, uh, we have Boston, uh, Boston goalie, good cheap goalie. Uh, well, cheap-ish. You have Vasilevsky. We're not paying 8500 for that. Um, Huso, it's 7200 Probably going to be low and coming from Detroit. Well, let's just take the, the, the conservative one. We'll try We'll plug in Olmark and see – what we can build with the guys that we identify. I mean, Omar is, is fine. Okay? But if we have to go down, we'll go down. We're not playing the Detroit goalie, obviously, because we are hopefully stacking Pittsburgh. So let's see. Let's just put all these guys in and, and see where we have to make concessions at all. Um, where was that sheet? All right. So let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, Pittsburgh first. So, First, let's double check the lines. Gensel is 1 1. You have uh, Latang is 1 1. You have Crosby, who is 1 1. Malkin, who is 2 1. And Raquel, who is 1 1. So we have the full power play. So let's let's put that in. That's the, the full Monty, so to speak. So we'll put in Crosby. Well, let's put it up here. Crosby, Latang. Look at me knowing that Latang is a defenseman. Um, Glensel we put in, right? Glensel is a winger. And then Malkin is the other wing. And we're not going to get both these teams in. but And then the fifth one, we feel like it, Raquel. So this will be the Saganite Raquel. Pittsburgh. Did I have Raquel here already? No. Where is where is Raquel? Raquel is 66,000. So if we did all of this, like all five of these Pittsburghs, it does put a lot of pressure on us, right? 2950 per man is kind of rough, uh, especially when you don't have that cheap of a goalie. So don't think you're going to be able to get all five of them in, but you might be able to get four of them. Um, so if I were going to you get four, I probably would get rid of the one that's not on the same even strength line. And that would be, looks like, uh, who did we say? Uh, Malkin. So Malkin is not on the same even strength line. So he would probably be the casualty. And then it, it, would, it, it bumps it up to 3850 a man, which you can, which you can do. I mean, you, you can, you can definitely make that work if you want to. Um, um, and what you would do is just go, Try to find some good one-offs here, but you probably want to get a three-man stack. So let's see if it's a little easier 
to build with uh, Vegas. Okay, that was the other one. So let's pull all the Vegas guys in here. Vegas, and we know we love these late games. So let's put these guys in. So Stone, and then Petrangelo. This is expensive, though. See where we're headed here. Riley Smith. And then uh, Haig. These are four. And is there a fifth that we could play? Hold on. So it's Stone, Petrangelo, Smith, Haig, and either Carlson or Stevenson. We're both kind of cheap. But let's see if we can't get the, the, the first line in. So let's get in Stevenson. So if we play all five of the Vegas guys, then, then we could do some business. Now we could do 5,100 5, a man. Like for example, we can go back and play some of these Pittsburghs. We can't play them all. But you might be able to get one or two of them in. You know, what about the cheaper guys? Like, um, well, Gensel's not very cheap. But Raquel, you could play Raquel and you can even play Crosby. No, you can't play Crosby. Can you play Malkin? You might be able to play Malkin. Right. Um, so you can almost do this. You can almost play a nice five two with, with, with Vegas and Pittsburgh, but you certainly can play Ve uh, uh, Vegas. So it looks as though the easiest team to play would be Vegas. And that would be probably be the way I would go in my hand built lineups. Um, let me just for, 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 for kicks. Let me see what the Tampa thing would look like. I mean, 8,300 and 7,800, not even on the same even strength line. I mean, this is just not what I like to do. So Tampa's going to have to beat me, I think. And they might. The big fat team total. All right, so let's now pull up Sabersim, and let's see what Sabersim would recommend. If we, again, we say what Sabersim recommends. Like Sabersim doesn't make recommendations, right? We, Sabersim is just a computer program. That, that, that behaves the way you sort of tell it to behave. So the first thing I'm going to tell it to do is to use my projections as its baselines. The other thing I'm going to tell it to do is exclude players that are not projected by me. Okay? So this is what it's done. It's filled in the My Projection tab with just with my projections instead of Sabersons, and it's not using anybody that I did not project. Same thing goes with the ownership. Which is over, which is over here. Now, what am I telling you? You remember, this is just a computer. Saberson doesn't like anything. It doesn't want you to do anything. It doesn't have a brain. It just does what it's told. So, what I'm telling you to do is build lineups. And where am I? What type of contest am I telling you to build these lineups? It's going to be for GPP. Now, fortunately, Saberson, you know, they they set defaults for you. But just again, you know, just to see what you can do. You could set it to build single entry lineups. That's going to create totally different types of lineups. You could build for 20 max. You could build for 150 max. If you want to see what all that means, you click on this manual mode. And this will show you what these sliders correspond to. Like a 150 max build looks like this, like only a three correlation, but five ownership fade and a huge amount of, of randomness, which is what smart diversity is. On the other hand, if you go into 20 max, let's see. I guess 20 max is very similar. What about for three max? This is two, four. Wow, it's almost very similar. Very, didn't imagine this was gonna be the case. This is very, this is very odd. I really thought the sliders were gonna be different. Two, four, 10, two, four, 10. This one's three, five, 10. That's the only difference. Two, four, 10. 2, 4, 10, 3, 5, 10, 3, 5, 10. So once you get up into the big GPPs, it goes for a little more correlation and a little more ownership fade. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So what type of contest I'm going to, you know, I want to I want to play this 150 max. So I'm going to leave it on their default sliders, but 150 max. 
I'm going to build 150 lineups. Now, again, it's only doing what it's, I'm telling you to do. What I'm actually telling you to do is to build 500 lineups. Right? That's what pool size is. And then it's going to give me, it's going to list the top 150 of the 500 that I create. Okay. And the reason for that is if we kind of want to make changes in, in my requirements after the lineups are made, it doesn't have to rebuild. It's just going to go and, and, and just take other lineups from that pool of 500 that I made. Uh, no, just, I have no minimum salary above, you know, below 45,000 they need max salary five fifty thousand. That's fine. All that just leave alone max exposure, leave it alone. And so again, all it's going to do is what I'm telling you to do. And that is, is have a minimum salary total of 45,000, no cap on the salary and no cap on the exposure, right? I can have a hundred percent of somebody. I don't care who in, is in the utility, leave this alone. I am not going to allow skaters against opposing goalie. If I wanted to, I could do that, but we're leaving this here and we're just going to start build and boom. So what Saberson is doing is it's creating high upside lineups that is based on those correlation sliders and those, those things that we just, we told it what to do. So when Saberson comes back and saying Saberson likes this, does it doesn't mean Saberson likes anything. It's based on the input you've given it. So the first thing I like to do is look at, you know, what type of team stacks it's recommending on a percentage basis. And it looks as though about 35% of the lineups are going to be some form of Vegas stack, 35% of some form of Tampa, and then very surprisingly, a full 35% of, of Anaheim, um, which is very, very, uh, very interesting. The next thing I want to do, though, is I want to look at the stack types that's creating. So I knew this was going to be a case. I didn't know, but you'll see that there are very few what I like to call traditional stacks in this build. You know, you're used to seeing, you know, four threes, fives, five twos. So what I have to do is I have to make a decision if, if, if I want to mess with the Saber Sim ranking. See, they're listing these things by ranking it by Saber score which basically means that the highest, you know, upside really <laughs> the, the lineup has, the better the Sabre score. Um, if we rate them instead by projection score, by pure projection, you get a different different group of rankings. Um, but we're, we like Sabre score, especially for GPPs. But I don't know if I want so much three twos. I mean, I, I probably want some more four threes. So what I'll do, is maybe put a minimum of 30% of my lineups would be four threes, 29%. And when you hit apply, wow, it's not even able to meet my exposures. It's my 500 lineups. It's very, very interesting. So what I could do is, is send the exposures and have it rebuild. But I'll tell you that whenever you get that, that notification from the SaberSim thing that, that it, even in for 500 lineups, it can't get you what you want. Um, you probably should listen to what Saberson is recommending because you're usually able to get 500 out of 500 lineups, 150 what you want by making some changes. And if your changes are that dramatic, changes probably shouldn't be made. Um, okay, so here, um, uh, after I've made these changes, still stack types, now we're getting the four threes that we demanded that we asked for. And in team stacks, now we're getting more Pittsburgh. Uh, more to the point, uh, we're getting as much Pittsburgh as anybody with respect to the four-man stacks. Um, very few five-man stacks in this whole build. So very interesting. Uh, it's a five-game slate. So on five-game slates, you'll sometimes get this. You know, it's sometimes difficult to jam in a bunch, a whole mess of four threes and five twos when you only have five games to work with. Um, if you force it to play four threes and five twos, what you're going to probably end up with are a lot of lineups that leave a lot of money on the table. Um, and you probably don't want to leave, you know, multiple thousands on the table in the name of just getting your stacks that pretty. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. We have a, a live uh, show at six o'clock where we will go over uh, more of this. Uh, and I guess that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.